Hi everyone, this is Chef Nicholas Lodge. Welcome to this Flower Pro video where I'll be introducing you and showing you how to use my brand new Flower Pro Winter Foliage Mold by Katie Sue Designs. So let's get started. So this is my fantastic new Winter Foliage Mold, uh, Flower Pro Mold. And uh, as you can see, a very incredible mold. It has lots and lots of elements. So just like many of my other molds, like my wedding foliage, my ultimate filler flowers, many, many fun things you can do with this. So this is gonna be part one of three videos. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how to create the spruce or fir. Um, so these are created in obviously this part of the mold here. And then also I'm going to then go on to show how to create pine cones in my Nicholas Lodge pine cone mold. For those of you who haven't seen that, to obviously complement the spruce and the uh, pine and the uh, other elements. So here you can see this is the sort of the finished spruce. I've done this one as blue spruce. I also will be showing different color variations. So here this is one without any um, obviously cones onto it. I'll be showing you also more of a sort of uh, juniper green colored one here, more natural colored one. And then we'll talk about making pine needles as well um, and uh, how to use pine needles, showing also different techniques on finishing the pine cones, like a whitewash effect. And then in the second part of this uh, first part video, I will be using the little um, larch cones. These are for hemlock or larch cones. And uh, then I'll be showing you how to make the little leaves, which are going to be made. You know, this is the hemlock or, um, as I said, the large cone. And then here we'll be using the small and medium of these leaves. Um, and you can see here, this shows the large done uh, here. So you've got large. And then also I have a second alternative method done with floral tape to make the like hemlock or large. So that is going to be in the first video. Now, the second video is going to focus on um, two, uh, again, trees, all right? So things we relate to winter foliage. So we're gonna have the sort of cedar or obviously part of the conifer family. So a lot of you have like Lalandii, which is a very popular conifer cedar tree in your garden. So this has got four different parts to it. Um, and we're also going to be making the berries here in this mold. And uh, so here you can see this shows again, three different variations on the, um, conifers, so just showing different color combinations and uh, making them more informal, uh, like this one, a little bit more formal, so depending on how you're going to use it. But again, a really, really excellent foliage to use. Remember, not only in the winter time, but pretty much any time of the year, you can use the cypress, um, the conifer. And then in that uh, second part of the, uh, obviously second part of the second video, I will show how to make the bay laurel. So this is the bay laurel leaf. And uh, so here you can see the bay laurel. And I'll show again a couple of variations. And this is what bay leaves come from. And obviously I'm gonna be showing you how to make the smaller berries. And in the winter time, these sort of black green berries that the bay laurel has on it. Again, a really fabulous foliage. And these techniques can also be used as I'll explain in the videos. There's many different leaves you can make with this, like basil leaves can be made. There's also like the little skinny leaf. You can make lavender, you can make rosemary. So lots of really, as I said, great, great foliage. And then the third part is going to be the, uh, this is the yew and juniper. So here we have, again, these are the yew leaves here. And then here we have obviously the juniper berries and then also the juniper leaves are the skinny ones like I use for the hemlock or larch. And uh, so here you can see we've got then the juniper. All right, so juniper, and this is very similar to the way you'd make rosemary, all right. And then we also have then the um, yew as well. So here are the yew leaves and the yew berries. So these can be used, of course, for craft application uh, with air drying clay. Um, and you're gonna obviously take them out of the mold, just use them like this on cards and things. Of course, you can also, as I'm gonna show in the videos, make um, obviously wired components in air drying clay, but also in sugar, which is what I'm making all of my pieces in. So very exciting uh, mold and obviously three exciting videos. So I'm gonna show you in this first part, obviously the starting with the spruce, but want to just to introduce you to the mold and see all the various fun things you can do with it. So let's get started. So this is my incredible Katie Sue Design Flower Pro Winter Foliage Mold. So this one mold will enable you, as with many of my other Flower Pro molds, to make many different varieties of, in this case, winter foliage. So obviously this mold focuses on winter season. So when we a lot of times think of a Christmas cake, for example, we have spruce or fir on there, 
We use pine cones, conifers, you know, so for a wreath, for all different types of things with using fresh greenery or for greeting cards in craft and things. These are elements we often see on a Christmas card. But of course, it doesn't limit you just to using this during the Christmas uh, holiday season. There are many elements on here you could use all throughout the year. In fact, everything on here could be used at any time of year for different applications. For example, for groom's cakes, rustic cakes, you know, you can use the spruce and the cones any time of year. Obviously the conifer and also because these elements are also multifunctional, you don't use them just necessarily for what they were designed for. They have a lot of other uses as well. So I'm just going to talk briefly a little bit about the mold. So first of all, as you can see, the mold has this sort of elevated uh, step up and that is where obviously the deeper berries will be. And uh, so on here, these are your spruce or fir. So there are two sizes of those. So when we think about a traditional Christmas tree, like for example, here in the United States, most people have a fir tree or a spruce tree and then sometimes a pine tree. But these are obviously traditional like Christmas tree branches, okay? Of course, it can be made in many different colors as I'm gonna show you. The other great thing about this mold, it was designed that you can use it half relief. Uh, so for example, when you're doing say cards or top of a Christmas cake, you can just use half pieces of all of these elements. And then of course, you can also make them three dimensional and put them on wires as well for more of a 3D type of spray of sugar flowers or craft clay flowers. Um, so anyway, so here's your spruce, so the two sizes of those. Um, and then the spruce, obviously, you can add, um, of course, like smaller cones, all right? But also, you can use my larger Nicholas Lodge Flower Pro um, cone mold that obviously has been out for a few years, one of our first molds, in fact. I'm going to be showing you both of those. But anyway, so here's your spruce, and then we move on to the large cone. So these smaller cones are for large. And larch is obviously another um, greenery that is used a lot for Christmas time in wreaths and things. And some people even have like a large Christmas tree, has these little tiny cones on. This is adorable for cookies, for cupcakes, for craft application on cards, petty fours, things like that. Um, then we move on to the, uh, for the larch, we're gonna be using the, uh, these are the, these skinny leaves here. There are three sizes of those. And for the larch, we're gonna make the needles with the two smallest sizes, small and the medium uh, needle mold here. Um, that is gonna be in part one, all right? Then in video number two, I'm going to show you how to do uh, conifers. So conifer, when we think about a lot of landscaping, a lot of people have conifer trees in their garden, but a lot of floral designers use conifers in floral arrangements. So there actually are three, si four sizes of conifer. This is baby one, this is the next size up, the next size up, and then the extra large. You have small, medium, large, and extra large. Now, the conifer can also be used for example, other varieties like a, a chamomile um, daisies, little tiny chamomile daisies. You can also use this for other different type of foliage. A lot of flowers have these very delicate leaves, okay? So this could be used for lots of different types of florals as well as for conifer leaves. And uh, then we move on to in the second video, so we're gonna be doing the conifer. And then here we have actually the conifer berries. So there's a set of three. They have almost like a little tiny star in the bottom of them. And then there's also a single conifer berry there with this little tiny, it's almost got like a five point star in it. So those are gonna be used for the conifer berries. And then in that second video, I will also be showing you the um, laurel, the bay laurel. All right, so this is bay leaves or laurel leaves that we use a lot in gardens. And again, very fragrant. So of course, bay leaves are used in cooking as well. But uh, I'm gonna be showing you how to make bay leaves. Um, but this also doubles up for lots of other leaves as well, including basil. So if you were gonna do like a gardening themed cake, you could do some basil leaves, a nice bright green leaf. But as I said, so this could be used for many different types of leaves, not just for the bay laurel. Um, and when we make the bay laurel, I'm also gonna be showing you how to do um, some berries on that. We're gonna be doing the some berries freehand and I'm gonna show you sort of the springtime and then also the uh, sort of summertime when you have the green berries, but also then the black berries, the black color berries you have during the winter time. Okay, so you'll see how to use that. So that is gonna be in video two. And then in video three, uh, we're going to be focusing on, first of all, juniper. Um, now, when we make the juniper, we're gonna be using the three sizes of the skinny leaves here. And these three sizes of these leaves, these can be used for obviously juniper leaves, we're also using these for the yew, but also this can be used for rosemary and for lavender as well. So if basically you do the 
uh, like I make the uh, yew leaves and the, um, the uh, leaves of the juniper. You can just do that without the berries and that would make rosemary, but you could also use these for lavender leaves and then add little lavender flowers. So as you can see, very multifunctional. So not only for cake, but also for craft application as well. And uh, when we make the juniper berries, we're going to be using the uh, cavity here that's got almost like three lines in it. There's two sizes there. So it's almost like a trefoil shape. So it's divided into three. That is what we're going to be using for the juniper berries. And then we're going to finish up video three with the last component, which is going to be the U. So here we have the U leaves, all right? There's a small and a larger U leaf. And then when we make the U berries, we're going to use the one that's got almost it looks a bit like a little bagel or ring donut in the bottom of it, like a little ring. And we're going to be using these two sizes of cavities for, as I said, for making the U berries. So let's get started talking about the first part, which is going to be the spruce. So I'm using a book here. This is an eyewitness guide to trees. So this is just useful for me to show you in reference, but of course you can do some research on the computer as well on like Google, any search engine, and you can put in spruce or fir. But you can see here when you have, uh, for example, like uh, this has a lot of the trees we're gonna be doing. And but you hear how you have like fir trees, so like noble fir. So again, these are all very popular as Christmas trees. And then of course you also move into here, this goes into larch, which we'll be talking about um, at the end of this first video. And then of course we have spruce. Now these are all members of the conifer family. So obviously the conifer family is a huge family of uh, trees and shrubs. And uh, obviously as I said, the spruce and the fir and the larch are all part of that conifer family. Now, um, as it says uh, in your, um, obviously in the book, um, in book four, in the instructions in book four, you know, spruce comes in many, many colors, all right? So there are many, many color options we have for making this flower. And uh, so you can make this in all different colors. So you can see here, these are just a couple of uh, various color variations, all right? So here you have, uh, for example, just more of a sort of a, like a, a juniper sort of green, a gray green color. Here I have just more of a uh, regular green, like a more of a mossy green color. Here I've got like the color I'm actually gonna show you. So it's a little bit like a eucalyptus color. Uh, also here you've got just sort of like more of a foliage green, so a little bit more yellowy. So pretty much all of these um, color palettes work very well. And when we're working in, um, of course, in air drying clay, you can use your measuring mold. So in with the measuring mold, all right? So the measuring mold, of course, you have, as you can see here, with the dark green and the green, you have these sort of ombre colors. So here you've got the sort of the sagey green. So when you do something like a blue spruce, of course you could use these sort of colors here. And, um, and then these are, there's a separate video which shows how to use this product, all right? But basically you're using a number one of white using the mold, and then you're using the pre-colored hardy clay to color. And then there's also on here, there are customized colors. So again, you know, this, this was Dusty Miller color would be really uh, good for a spruce, for blue spruce, eucalyptus color as well. And of course, if you make these colors up and they're a little bit dark, you can also add white hardy clay to them. Now in sugar, you would pretty much do the same. You know, you start off with a green color. So you would just use your green food colors and then you can add a little bit of gray. Um, so for example, like this color here, I use some sort of teal uh, turquoise color and then a little bit of gray and a little bit of green. All right, so you just play around with your colors. Now, of course, it also is going to be dependent on what else you're going to put on the cake, if it's going on a cake or in a wired spray, because you don't want to have all of your foliage exactly the same color. So we're going to start off by taking a 24 gauge wire. So this is a 24 gauge wire. And uh, 24 gauge wire, we're gonna tape this with brown floral tape. Now, generally when I'm doing spruce or fir, I'm using brown floral tape. So this is half width brown tape. I've just cut this with my little cutter. I've used it in a lot of my videos before. And uh, what we're gonna do is just gonna stretch your tape. All right, so just stretch that a little bit. And you're gonna tape down about halfway down the length of the 24 gauge wire. Now, um, you can use green or white wire. Now remember, all of these directions are also in book four, okay? So you can just uh, follow that, and then of course watch the videos like this. And uh, so we're just gonna tape down about halfway down, okay? And of course you do as many of those as you want to do your pieces of um, spruce or fir, okay? So you've got your wires covered. 
Now we're going to take our uh, mold. Now all of the cavities on this mold, all right, so all of the cavities, I will be putting all of the, not the berry ones, but also all the flat ones here. All of these flatter, lower elevation ones I will be using, except for the berries here and here. I will be using a little bit of vegetable fat vegetable shortening, um, or in the case of obviously air drying clay, you can also use like moisturizing clean cream like Nivea or cold cream as well. Now generally, because these are all very detailed in some of my Flower Pro molds, I'll just use a little bit of the fat on my finger, but because of the design in here, you're better to use a brush. So this is just a brush, I, it's actually a stencil brush, it's a short bristle brush, and I just keep this for this purpose, all right? So what I generally do is just gonna put just a little tiny bit of fat just on the back of my, of shortening on the back of my hand. All right, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just brush this in the two cavities we're working in. So just a little tiny bit. So I found this is a good brush being a short bristled brush. It gets into all of the detail, but you're just gonna fill this up. Now, when you have finished with your mold, ultimately the end of the project, you'll need to um, put a little bit of washing up liquid dish soap in here. Just give this a scrub with like a nail brush, rinse it clean and then dry it. I, for example, use my food dehydrator if I was going on to uh, do something else. But also, but you always remember, or you can also put these in a dishwasher. These are totally dishwasher safe as well. Also, when you're changing from craft to sugar, so for example, if you're making some hardy clay spruce for a Christmas card, and then the next week you're going to be using the same mold for obviously for sugar spruce, you need to make sure again you wash the mold. But generally if you've got obviously a dishwasher, you can just pop these in the dishwasher while you're doing your dishes. So anyway, so we have our mold here. Now we're gonna use our size guide. So remember size guide comes in the back of your book. All right, so you can obviously just cut that out. It's already pre-drilled with the holes in it, but we also do have a plastic size guide. So this is uh, as added uh, last year uh, to my Flower Pro accessories. So this is wonderful, it's very durable, especially when you're using a lot of dark colors, it's not gonna stain and you can wipe this. So I'm going to measure off my paste here and uh, we're gonna use a number eight small for the small cavity and a number nine small for the large cavity. So using our size guide now, again, many of you are familiar with my uh, Flower Pro uh, method of working. So here we've got number eight small. So that means your number eight is just gonna go through the hole, all right? And in your book, it references the size guide, okay? Because sometimes we measure a regular number eight or nine would be one third below and two thirds above, which will be seen a little later on. But here we use a number eight small and a number nine small. So that means they're just gonna go through the hole. What I normally do is I use a little here, a little silicone mat, just make as many balls of paste as you need and then you just can keep those underneath a cup. All right, now with air drying clay, because air drying clay is very um, air sensitive, all right, generally I would just keep those in your little zip top bag as I would if you were using, for example, making many of these, like say 12 of these, um, do you just have a few of them under a time, at a time under your little pot, okay? So we're gonna take your, um, paste here. So we're going to, as I said, so we brush that, we're gonna roll into a sausage the length of the cavity, lay towards the top of the mold and press in using a cosmetic sponge and Flower Pro Flexi Scraper. So we're gonna be using our Flexi Scraper. Um, Flexi Scraper is really great. You'll see how I use this on all of these molds in some way, some capacity. All right, it's really good for trimming off. We're gonna show you first of all the small one. Now with sugar, we're going to just condition this. So we're gonna just put a little tiny bit of um, obviously vegetable fat, vegetable shorten into this. And then we're gonna just gonna roll this into a sausage. A lot of times I'll do this on a little silicone mat or like a silicone baking mat because it's gonna give you a little bit of, uh, makes it a little bit easier to make it into a sausage. All right, and this wants to be made to about the length of the mold here, like so. Now, putting the vegetable fat or shortening in here, even with, as I said, the hardy clay is gonna aid with release, because as you can see, these are incredibly detailed molds, all right? So we're just gonna place the paste into the molds. You place that toward the top, and then uh, you're gonna lay towards the top of the mold and press in using cosmetic sponge and then using your Flower Pro Flexi Scraper, working towards the side and base. Skim off excess paste at base using shorter side of scraper and then work into details with the Dresden veining tool. So what we're gonna do here, now you can either use like a cosmetic sponge, uh, which again, I've used on a lot of my flower pro projects, or you can also use a cosmetic wedge, all right? For sometimes smaller things like this, the wedge works really well. So what I'm doing here is I'm just working. Now this is gonna be a little tiny bit more than we need, all right? So it's gonna be a little tiny bit more than we need. So you see how I'm working from the top of the mold down towards the bottom, all right? 
So you see, I've really pretty much filled that level. All right, the reason why I don't use my finger here is I've talked about this before on some of my other videos. Your finger is obviously gonna be concave. So what's gonna mean you're not gonna have a flat surface. So when you're making especially two halves, they're not gonna to stick together because you'll have obviously that shape. So just gonna work this down. And then with your flexi scraper, so with my flexi scraper using a sawing action, I would just saw off that excess paste, all right? And you can just use your flexi scraper here. And if you've got some excess paste here, you can just gonna, just gonna just skim that off. You see how that's gonna work beautifully. And then you can just to aid making sure that goes into all of the cavities, you can just use your, here, your little veining tool or on when I come to the bigger one on some of the other projects, you can also use the side of the Dresden tool, all right? So you see how you're just making sure that that, that as I said, is filled to the top there, like so, all right? So just make sure you stay within the perimeter of your cavity. Once we've got to that stage, um, so then we're gonna work into details at the edge of the mold using the Dresden veining tool, especially the fine, uh, fine details, all right? So we're just gonna do this uh, onto here. And as I said, you can also use your here, your little companion tool. So on some of the small ones, you know, you can just make sure that they come in, but you're going to get this. So this smaller one is um, a little bit more compact. All right. So when I show you the larger one, you see how this has got longer because um, more opened up. Now we're going to then take your wire. Okay. And um, so then we're going to take the um, covered wire, hold over the spruce and hold with the thumb and finger five millimeters, three eighths of an inch from the end of the spruce. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take this and I'm just going to hold that onto there. So I'm going to be about approximately five millimeters uh, from the end of the wire to where I uh, put the glue. So this is about five millimeters from here to here, all right, about three eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to take some glue. So I'm using just the word glue and in the book, the front of the book, there's a reference to this. Glue could mean for air drying clay, PVA glue. Um, it could mean edible glue. It could be piping gel, you know, so pretty much as I said, flexi glue, anything you're using uh, for the particular paste you're working with. But as I said, so you would put your glue on there. But as I said, so I'm just putting that on to the, uh, to a less than about five millimeters shorter than the top. Now what we're going to now do is going to take this and you're going to push this into the mold and you want this to skim under the surface. So literally what I'm doing is I'm pressing down with my finger here. So you see I'm just going to make sure that that goes into the surface. Don't need a lot of glue. You can put just if it gets a little sticky just put a little touch of cornstarch on the top of that. Just going to press this down. Now don't worry if the because this is obviously dark chocolate brown uh, wire. Um, covered wire. So don't worry if the wire is visible as long as, as I said, the wire isn't physically sticking out, that you have this sort of skimmed off area of your uh, paste. All right. You're going to flex your mold. Okay. And so then it comes out like this. So you see here you have your beautiful um, spruce here. All right. So you've got your spruce there. So this is going to give you your spruce. Now at this point, all right, you could, if you wanted to, for example, you could cut this down, okay? So if you wanted to make, like when you're making a, a game for a project, like again, those of you working in craft for a Christmas card, you might want a shorter piece of this. So all you then would do is you take your pair of scissors and with your scissors, you just would make a cut here and here, all right? And of course you can also, um, this. these are actually the two pieces straight out of the mold, all right? So this is actually shows you the small one and the large one. So again, if you're doing this for a craft project, you could just cut that with a pair of scissors. So generally you're just gonna follow that same angle you have at the bottom and you can make this whatever length you want it. Also like you could make a, like a sort of this one also a little shorter as well. So if you need to cut it down, but also when you're doing this wired, you also have the option of doing that also. So you just would cut that with scissors if you wanted to, all right? Um, and then at this point here, just gonna just pinch that round the bottom and then you can make a few little additional cuts on here if you wish to, all right? So generally if I'm doing this as a sort of a three dimensional one, I would just make a couple of little extra cuts, just sort of like here and there. But usually I don't do that for, um, as I said, if I was using it for craft, like on say a Christmas card or whatever, but you can just sort of separate those a little bit. So you're just gonna get that end extra little piece there. And um, so then you're going to um, 
then flex and mold, remove that, gonna cut with scissors if wanting smaller pieces. Now you're gonna dry flat side down in a food dehydrator. So I use a food de dehydrator, which I'm gonna show you, which is behind me, um, when I do all of my sugar things. So a food dehydrator is really a good investment if you're doing a lot of sugar. For obviously air drying clay, um, there's a slight difference here because you don't have to let this dry, okay? because air drying clay shrinks about eight to 10% when it dries. So when you've done the first one, what you will then do, which I'm gonna show you next anyway, but you just would refill the mold up. So if this was air drying clay, refill the mold up, brush that with your PVA glue, and then you would stick the second half on top of the first half, okay? So the this one on top of the second one. And uh, then you take it out of the mold because if you make, for example, and that applies also to my pine cone molds, my poppy seed heads, my lily buds, any of my uh, molds that you have two halves of them, um, you're going to always with air drying clay make one half and the second half straight away. And you can also do that with sugar, all right? I have personally found it's easier when I make all of my things like my pine cones and for example, the spruce, things like that to make the first half, let it dry, then you make the second half. But you could, if you're in a time restraint, you could refill this up straight away put some piping gel or uh, glue or whatever onto there. And then you would then stick the second one on top of the first one, take it out of the mold, stand it up and then let it dry. Okay. Um, but as I said, I prefer to make this in two stages. So um, we have here, so I'm going to show you now the food dehydrator. So here we have my food dehydrator. This is an Excalibur brand. There are many different varieties of food dehydrator. And, um, but I have this set on 45 degrees C or 115 Fahrenheit. And uh, we're gonna put this in. This has got, this one particular one has got five shelves. So you just would put your pieces in there, just put it in the food dehydrator. You'd put the lid on this and then you just would leave that for about an hour, 90 minutes, all right? And what that's gonna do is going to uh, take the moisture out of the product, all right? But this is wonderful for especially big sugar flowers, like when you make peonies or sunflowers, you can also hang them in there. So a lot of times when I hang flowers in here, I'll actually take this mesh off. And you see, I've got then the grid and I just would hang my roses or my peonies or my sunflowers, slide those in. It's a very, very good way to dry it. But because several of these items like the pine cones and things I'm gonna show you are made in two halves, this is a really good as said thing to have for sugar. So I'm going to now show you the larger one because this is a little bit more obviously detailed on the edge and things just to show you really how to fill in because this one is a more basic shape. So again, we're gonna take, this is a number nine small. All right, we're gonna condition this. So we're gonna pop this into the mold here. We're gonna press this in to the mold. And again, if your paste is a bit sticky, you can put some cornstarch on there. And you're gonna work from the top of the mold. So you see how what you're doing is you're working from the top of the mold coming down towards the bottom, okay? And you'll have a little bit of excess paste here, but just make sure you don't push too, too much down because it wants to be level. And the other thing you can also do is using your flexi scraper. This is also good when you put the wire in. If the wire is a little bit, be careful not to bend the wire, but if it's a little bit bent, you can just press it in with your flexi scraper. And again, what we're going to do here is going to just skim off the excess paste, all right? But you see how you stay within the perimeter of the mold. So this one here, going to take your, again, you can see here, you're going to use, so you can use your Dresden tool on its side, and you can see how I'm just pulling this in, and then you can also use the veining tool as well. But just stay within the design of the mold, but you see how you're just pulling this in, and then if you do have any little areas where you, you need to patch it, so think about like a little patch. What you can also do is like if you had a little area where you suddenly need a little bit more paste, um, you can just patch that very, very easily. All right, but anyway, so you're just gonna work within your mold here. But you just stay within the perimeter of the mold and you can use your, this is my veining tool. So the veining tool is really good when you're going into those little tiny small side ones here and see how they're just going to come in. So it's pretty quick to do, all right, very, and don't worry about if you get a little tech, because when we actually do the top part of this, we're going to actually texture this anyway. So we're going to just work this here like so. And then we're just going to press that down. And then we're going to take your wire here. So again, we're going to take the wire, it's going to go about five millimeters from the tip of the spruce. We're going to take a little bit of glue. I just have my glue brush in a uh, 
wet washcloth or flannel. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. Now you can also use piping gel here as well for sugar ones, all right? So, because when I do my pipe, when I do the large pine cones, I'm gonna show you using piping gel. So piping gel could also be used here for the spruce, all right? So again, you're just gonna put this underneath the surface of the paste. Now don't worry if it says it splits a little tiny bit because you're just going to be, you're literally just putting that underneath there like so. And you see how I'm just going to press that in with my little flexi scraper. It's important to make sure at the bottom here because that's really the important part there that as I said you, so if you gain, if you just need to put like a little, like a little patch of, almost like a little plaster, a little band-aid or paste onto there, that would just, uh, as I said, hold that into place. All right, just make sure that you Fill this out. Now remember, you're gonna flex your mold like this, all right? And then when you take your piece out, you'll see how you're gonna get your beautiful spruce, okay? Now, um, if you do this correctly, you won't have overfill. Overfill is when you have like a membrane of extra paste on the top. But if you do have any little like membrane there, um, you can also just go in with your little um, companion tool. But as I said, just, just as I said, just work that onto the edge. But as I said, if you try and stay within the perimeter of the mold, you won't have any issues, okay? And again, we're gonna now just take your, here, I'm just gonna make a few extra little snips. As I said, you only usually need to do this on a wired one, all right? But you're just gonna do that just sort of here and there. I'm gonna make a few little extra cuts to almost like separate those a little bit, all right? And then that can join the other one in the food dehydrator. So, uh, but remember for air drying clay, you go straight on and repeat the process is what I'm gonna show you now. So as you can see, these ones are dry, all right? So these ones are dry. Um, so I made those a couple of hours ago, those dried in my food dehydrator. And uh, so now I'm gonna move on to show you how to do the second part. So when we do the second part of this, so we're going to then with your, so here we're going to then um, repeat the process. Once the mold is filled, worked all the way around the edge of the needle tool end of the companion tool. So here we're gonna do this second part, a little tiny bit different. So this is my number eight small. Now, of course, even when you are doing um, a wired, wired ones, all right, if you were doing a spray, say, fairly flat to the cake or sitting up against a cake, like a groom's cake or a wedding cake, you also could just do half relief spruce as well, right? You don't have to make it necessarily three dimensional. And of course, when you're doing this for, um, so you, you get this effect here, but also of course for craft, for Christmas cards and things like that, generally you're just gonna use half relief and then this part will be attached to the card back. Um, also, when you're doing things like cookies or cupcakes, you could make cut these down to make these different sizes. But you know, you could put this sticking out the top of a cupcake. A little later, I'm also going to show you how to use spaghetti. So you could instead of inserting a wire into there while it's in the mold, you could put a piece of spaghetti. So again, you could then push that in the top of a cupcake. I do have lots of very informative YouTube videos showing things like, for example, my toadstool and mushrooms, if you haven't watched those. And that shows how to again use edible support system like spaghetti. And uh, so we're gonna take, so we're just gonna repeat this process again. So remember, I start off at the, at the end of the piece here. So just gonna just work this in. You see how I'm just gonna work this down. So in both, especially for the small one, the eight small will give you a little bit more than you need, all right? You will have a little tiny bit to trim off on the um, larger one. Because just with the size guide, because I use generally two sizes, um, regular size, which is one third below, or a small size, I said if we went up to the next um, next size, um, if we went up to regulate, it would be way too big. And of course, a seven would be a little bit too small. So that's why sometimes you'll have extra paste, all right? then you're just gonna just skim this off. So when you do this, you're using a flat, like almost a sawing action like this. So you hold your uh, little flexi scraper flat. We're then going to take your, just gonna work this into the cavity of the molds here. You see, I'm just gonna work that into the cavity of the mold. All right, so we're now, so this would be just like we were before. All right, and now, but on this one, what we're gonna do is we're going to then work all the way around the edge of the needle tool or the companion tool. So we're gonna use your, and the reason is, is because the, unlike my pine cone where you're gonna have a sort of their match up perfectly because this is a natural shape. So what we wanna do is when you have the, the back 
needles here, all right? So the back needles there, when you look into them, you don't wanna have like a flat back visible. So you're gonna use texture on this second part. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna just use your, but you only need to do this when you're doing like the 3D one. See how I'm just marking this almost a bit like a feather. Remember this tool is wonderful, the companion tool, because it's very flexible. We're just gonna just work your edge of your spruce here like so. So just gonna work the edge of that spruce, okay? And then I'm gonna take now some glue here. Just gonna brush the glue pretty much all over this. Just gonna brush the glue all over this. And you can use your, and then we're gonna take the second half of the spruce. All right, so this is my dry, this is my dry one here. All right, and you're just gonna pop this onto the top here, like so. See here, I'm gonna press this. Now, if this was air drying clay, or you wanted to do the all-in-one method here, you of course can't press too much onto here, but the advantage of air drying clay, it's obviously has a totally different sort of, it's a bit spongy, like almost like a rubber ball. So it's really is not easy, it's easy uh, not to damage it like you would with sugar. So that's why generally when I'm making sugar ones, like I'm showing you here, I prefer to make the two halves. This is a dry half onto a soft half. But as I said, if this is air drying clay, you just would press over with using your fingers like this. Um, but as I said, it won't damage it. But you have to do that with air drying clay because if you make one half and let it dry, it's going to shrink, it's not going to match up. And that especially was with the things like pine cones. All right, so you're gonna just take that out of the mold, just gonna mold this around. So just where the two parts meet, just gonna just gently press those. All right, so it's gonna get rid of your seam. And then here, what we do is again, just gonna snip. So just gonna make a few little snips here on the bottom part there, okay. And you can just use your, if there are any areas where it doesn't stick to the first half, you can just use your little tool here just to sort of blend that like so. And that is, this is how we make the uh, 3D spruce, all right? So that is how you would make your 3D spruce. And um, as you can see here, you've got your spruce. So this shows you, as I explained, some different color combinations here, all right? Um, so really, as I said, I've almost got like four different colors of green here like a yellowy green, just a regular green, um, a darker green, like gray green color, and then also like, for example, like the blue spruce color here. So next we're gonna move on to, um, I'm gonna show you how to make some pine cones to go with the spruce. So of course, when we use spruce and fir, we could use it just as it is. So for example, let's say you're doing a Christmas card with air drying clay. Uh, Katie Sue have some really uh, lovely molds, like for example, there's a Christmas ornament mold. So you could have this on a card and then you could have obviously ornaments, like think of a decorated Christmas tree. You could do a little strand of Christmas lights. I mean, there's lots and lots of fun things you can do with that. But thinking a bit more in a natural environment, you know, obviously many of those trees when they're growing have cones on them. And sometimes when you buy a Christmas tree, it will still have pine cones attached. So the pine cones are a perfect accompaniment. So this is the um, my classic pine cone mold. This is my NL collection pine cone mold. This is actually with the first part of the first ever molds that we introduced. This is obviously pre Flower Pro. Um, and so there are there is a video on using this mold, but it's just that now with Flower Pro with using the size guide and many other techniques I use, uh, this has been a this is a revised version of that. And so I'm going to show you how to make the pine cones. And then I'm going to show you how we finish off the spruce and fir with some different coloring textures, uh, colors and textures also on the pine cones as well. Now, when we are using the uh, pine cone mold, again, with obviously using your air drying clay, you would be using some brown color. So you would use with your air drying clay. So you're gonna go into a sort of a number five, number six color. So all that means is that you would be using a number one of white, and then you'll be adding a number five or a number six of brown air drying clay to that. Um, so when we do this with sugar, we're pretty much gonna do the same sort of thing in that we're going to reduce the intensity of the paste because if you're buying pre-colored uh, sugar paste or rolled fondant, um, this is usually a pretty dark chocolate color, okay? So most of the manufactured fondants or um, rolled fondants and gum and uh, sugar paste are very dark chocolate. So normally when I do this, there's two options. So in your uh, book four, um, in the uh, instruction, 
instructions. So you're either going to take uh, 30 grams of brown sugar paste or old fondant and 30 grams of white, and you mix that together. And then we add tylose or CMC to this. Alternatively, you could also take 30 grams of chocolate brown rolled fondant or sugar paste and 30 grams of white uh, gum paste or flour paste, all right, flour and modeling paste, and mix those together. So you can make what we call 50-50 paste. But I'm going to show you how to modify this. So this would be also the same. If you watch my, um, for example, my antler video where I show how to make my antlers, I use the same sort of technique, all right? So you're just making this just a lighter. See, this is a much nicer sort of chocolate brown color. So in your directions there, it says you're gonna take uh, 60 grams of brown sugar paste rolled fondant, half pre-colored brown and half white. And then we're gonna add 1 8 of a teaspoon, all right? So I'm gonna use a 1 8 of a teaspoon. If you only have down to a quarter teaspoon, just obviously just use half of that. So just obviously scrape half of it off. But most teaspoon measures go down to an eighth of a teaspoon. And this would give you enough to make a few pine cones. Now, if you're needing to make more, you just can double that recipe, which is again in the book. So you can use 120 grams of uh, your sugar paste or rolled fondant. So that would be 60 grams of brown, 60 grams of white, and then a quarter of a teaspoon of tylose, okay? So we're gonna put in a quarter of a teaspoon of the tylose powder, and then we're gonna take a comparable amount. So generally I just do that by eye about an eighth of a teaspoon of um, my vegetable fat. So we've got an eighth of a teaspoon of tylose, an eighth of a teaspoon of vegetable fat or shortening. And then we're just gonna mix this through. Now this could also be used for if you were gonna be doing, for example, your spruce. So if you're gonna make your spruce or your fur like this for a Christmas cake, where you're not gonna wire this and we don't need the structural strength, you could totally make your spruce in this uh, modified sugar paste or rolled fondant as well. But this, is, this would only be suitable for using it like half relief, okay? Um, so uh, when you're making more like a wired spray of Christmas flowers, for example, holiday flowers, we say a poinsettia and some of your spruce and things, then you generally are gonna use uh, flour paste, gum paste, um, any of those, you know, flexi paste, anything that's gonna dry basically harder and you'd make flowers with. All right, so once you've done this, you're going to then put this into a zip top bag and generally you just wanna leave this for about 15 minutes to firm up. Because if you use this straight away, it's gonna be a little bit soft, all right? And then we're gonna move on to make the pine cones. Now, when we do this, all right, so for the pine cones, once we've got the um, that completed, so then we're gonna leave that. We're gonna take 20, a 20 gauge half length wire. Okay, so we're gonna use a, a 20 gauge half length white wire, which is here. And we're gonna take some half width brown floral tape and we're gonna make a floral tape bud. So this is a little bit like a cotton bud, a Q-tip, all right, on the end of that. And again, I've used this a lot in my Flower Pro videos, this technique. We use this for a lot of centers, but it just gives a little bit more support. So we're gonna stretch your tape, and then we're gonna go around five times, make a hook, and then 10 more times, and continue half the way down. All right, so we're just gonna go around. So you're gonna go around. So one, two, three, four, five. Take your pair of pliers. 20 gauge is quite a strong wire. Gonna bend this over, squash this, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If your fingers get a little sticky, use a little bit of corn flour, cornstarch, eight, nine, ten, and you're gonna come down about halfway down the wire. So in your directions in book four, we use this for um, the, the medium and large pine cone. So the two largest sizes, we use a 20 gauge for both of those. And then for the small one, you'd repeat the process exactly the same, five times hook times 10, but with 22 gauge wire. Remember, this could be green or white wire, okay? So I'm gonna show you the pine cone. Now, when we do the pine cone, we're gonna start off by measuring off a number 11, number 10 small, and number eight small for the large, medium, and small. Now, um, this is some brown I've already modified because what I've just done would need to sit for about 15 minutes before you could use that. Now, we've already, you've just seen how to measure off like small sizes, all right? So when we made the spruce, we use an eight small and a nine small. So here we have an eight small, so that's gonna be a number eight that goes through the hole. Uh, this is gonna be a 10 small, which is gonna be for the medium pine cone. So we've got eight small and 10 small. And then when we use the, when we make the large one, we're gonna use a number 11 size. Now, when we, when it doesn't say small after, the, after here, so this is just gonna be a regular number 11 size. What we do there is you're gonna make your ball of paste. 
So you're going to measure it so that about one third is below the hole and two thirds is above the top. All right, so when you put it into the mold here, as you can see, there's approximately one third below the hole and two thirds above the top, all right? And then generally what I do is if you were making, say, you know, two of each size pine cone, you can measure, obviously, just use that as your master size, another two, another one of those, another one of those, another one of those, all right? Because if you're doing a large project and you need, you know, several pine cones, like here you can see, of course, you could measure off whatever you needed for the project. Now, of course, the pine cones can also be used in half relief as well. Um, so when you use these for, uh, for example, here, you can see on some cookies. So here I've got the small pine cone. I have the medium pine cone there used on a cookie. All right, when I do, for example, these are some other cookies here. So I have a cookie there that's been done with my small antler. And then I've got used the holly from my holly and mistletoe mold. And here I've got the small, and then here I've got the small uh, pine cone as well. So they're really, really good for application on that. And then also here on the little mini Bush de Noel or a larger Bush de Noel Yule log, you can use the pine cones as well. And I'm gonna show you how I do those. I do have a separate video which shows how to do the Bush de Noel, the larger Yule log and the smaller Yule or mini Yule log, where I show how to make the pine needles out of angel hair pasta as well, so check that out. Um, but when I'm doing these on, for example, cupcakes or on Bush de Noel's, the Yule log, I generally put the pine cones on spaghetti, okay? But of course, for card, for a greeting card, you know, Christmas cards and things, the pine cones are wonderful. I'm gonna show you here the medium-sized pine cone, all right? So what we're gonna do then, uh, once we've done that, you brush the inside of the pine cone mold again with your vegetable fat shortening. Okay, so it's gonna just take a, generally I just put a little bit of that on the back of my hand. And the reason is, is if you take the fat straight from, you're probably gonna get too much on the brush. So if you just take a little bit with your, and put it on the back of your hand, all right, that means you're just gonna get a very, very light amount onto here. Now, a lot of the regular Katie Sue molds, if you watch a lot of the demonstrations by the design team, they a lot of times use corn flour or corn starch, but with especially my Flower Pro, with some of the, the detail of the molds, but also working with sugar, it's a different medium to obviously air drying clay. So on a lot of them, you will see me use the vegetable fat or shortening onto there. So here, what we're gonna do is gonna make this into a basic cone shape. All right, it's gonna make it into a basic cone. And again, we're gonna press this in with your cosmetic sponge and then using also your flexi scraper. And then again, you see how you're gonna have a little tiny bit of excess paste at the top. You're gonna to just trim that off with your flexi scraper like that. But again, remember, as I said, this is gonna come right the way to the top of the mold here, like so, it's gonna be level. Um, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the floral tape bud. So this is the one on the 20 gauge. Remember, this is the 20 gauge for this one and this one. This will be your number 11 one you're gonna put. Now I'm gonna use here, I'm gonna use some piping gel just to show you. So this is piping gel. I've got it in a little needle tip applicator. You can just use it from a pot, but I'm just gonna put just a little bit of piping gel. I'm just gonna put this onto one side of the top here. So you're gonna put just a little bit of piping gel just onto one half of that floral tape bud. So I've just done it on here. And then I'm going to then push this. And when I push this in, I'm gonna go in at an angle. So I'm gonna go underneath the skin of the pine cone and just gonna work that around just like I did with my, if you get a little bit too much piping gel, just put a little bit of corn flour onto there. But the important thing is here that your back part is flat. You see, so you need to make sure that you press this on with your flexi scraper. All right, so you see how it's completely flat on the side there, okay? Because if you have a mound there, what it means is you're not gonna have good point of contact with between your two pieces. All right, and then what we do is you're gonna flex the mold. Again, here out comes your beautiful pine cone. As you can see here, you've got the beautiful, fabulous pine cone, which obviously, again, you could use in half relief as well, but uh, on a wire. And uh, then again, what we would do is we'd let this dry. So again, pop this in your food dehydrator for a couple of hours, two to three hours, or as I said, leave it just sort of for all day or overnight just to dry. Because again, when you press the second half, when you do press this first half on top of the second half, if it's dry. Now again, um, when you're using air drying clay, if you're making air drying clay pine cones, for, for example here, you can see this is a topper. 
um, I made using my uh, Flower Pro Rustic Hoop. These are, again, there's a video that shows how to use these for Christmas time. But here you can see I've got pine cones. These are made with my, um, obviously with air drying clay and also my antlers done in my antler mold on an MDF Flower Pro uh, Easy Hoop. Um, but again, when I made uh, these ones, again, in air drying clay, you start off with uh, obviously the first half, then straight away you do the second half because of shrinkage, all right? And here you can also see I've done these in more of a tan color, a little bit like when I do the um, the large cones, I'm gonna do them in a lighter chocolatey brown. So of course you could add yellow, you could add orange, you could do different colors uh, with your pine cones as well. Because again, it's gonna depend on what you put in with them. But, anyway, so, but with sugar ones, you wanna let these dry ideally, okay? Because if you try to make the second half straight away, you're gonna squash that detail very, very easily. So this would go into, as I said, into the food dehydrator or just left the room temperature. And then what you would then do is once that's dry, you would repeat that with the second half. But these are super easy to make and obviously so much fun and obviously they're great uh, for using on all different things. So I've used these on groom's cakes, on rustic wedding cakes, you know, now with a trend towards like barn weddings, rustic weddings, where people are doing like the naked, semi-naked buttercream cakes, you know, these work perfect for, so it's not just something, just like my winter foliage mold, you're only gonna use at Christmas time. There's many, many opportunities to use this. So again, you're just going to press this in. So just use your cosmetic wedge here. And again, just going to just going to skim off my excess paste here. But definitely check out my YouTubes on making my Yule log and the mini bouche de Noël. And then also I have, um, you know, of course, videos showing how to make the antlers. So, I mean, there's lots and lots of fun videos, YouTube videos I have there. And then what we're going to do is going to take your uh, here little bit of piping gel. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of piping gel. So again, I'm just gonna just do a couple of little dots of piping gel onto here. So not too much, just enough. And you want to, it's always really important when you're doing this, you see how I'm almost like brushing, I'm brushing sort of over the side as well, just right on the very edge, because that's really your point of contact, all right? So you need to make sure that you brush thin layer of that. Um, other things you can also use would be for like the pine cones, the antlers and things. You can also use corn syrup, all right? So Cairo brand, which is obviously popular here in the US, but in UK, like places like Tesco sell now a lot of UK, US foods items like Crisco and shortening. And then the uh, corn syrup, you can use those, but just something to make it it's sticky. It's a little bit more sticky than, for example, like edible glue, which is going to not really have the same strength. So you want to use, as I said, like piping gel or corn syrup really here uh, to stick those together. And those are available globally, um, very easily to get. So this is a dry center, all right? So this one was actually made um, yesterday. So I've just let that dry naturally, but as I said, you can put this in your food dehydrator. Again, what we're gonna do, you see how I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna put this on the top, but you see how I can press really nice and firmly now on my first one because it's dry. In a flexure mold, I'm gonna take that out and this is going to give you a pine cone. You see, you get this beautiful pine cone. And then when you dry these, what I normally do is um, I put these into convoluted foam. So this is my dry half. I just put it in convoluted foam like that to let it continue drying. And this can go in the food dehydrator like this as well, or again, just leave this at room temperature. Now air drying clay, you don't of course have to put in the food dehydrator. But just remember air drying clay, you make one half, make the second half straight away. Okay, and that's how you would do that. And then just to show you here, just a small one, like just doing half pine cones. So see how you're just gonna make your, again, just gonna put a little bit of my shortening into here. Now you can also use a marzipan model in chocolate for these as well, but that typically is not something I'd recommend using for 3D um, ones because also when you're talking about um, 3D ones, you know, marzipan doesn't really ever dry as does model in chocolate. But as I said, for like half relief ones, model in chocolate works great. But of course you can do the 3D ones like I'm showing you, I've just shown you, but instead of using a wire, you would use a piece of spaghetti. So you just take a piece of spaghetti, make that about five centimeters long, about two inches long. Again, we can just put a little bit of piping gel onto that. So this goes onto the end of the spaghetti. Just make that sticky. Brush this on as well. And then you're gonna insert that into the pine cone like that. It goes in. 
Of course, when you come to use this, you can break this off. So you see, that's how you make a half pine cone. And then of course, the other thing with this is that you can make the pine cone, you can let that dry and then you could do the second half. So then you see how you'll have a 3D pine cone on a piece of spaghetti, or you have a half relief one. So just remember on a lot of things like cookies and things like the little bouche de Noël, see there I've got it on a piece of spaghetti um, because obviously it's going into the cake part of that, all right, into the little mini Swiss roll. And, um, but you just do half relief ones. And then of course the other nice thing about this, so this is the three sizes these make, all right? So this is the large, the medium and small, but also I make smaller Pine, uh, pine cones as well. So you can make these in different sizes when you're doing different like smaller cookies or again cupcakes, cake pops and things. And all you would do there is you just would take a smaller piece of paste, whatever size you want it to be, and you're just gonna just work this. Now when you're using the um, modified fondant, if you find it starts to get a little bit dry, just work a little bit of fat or shorten into it. You can use a little bit of cornstarch as well if you want. And see, then what you do is you just drop this in the bottom of the mold like that. I'm just gonna press this in. I'm gonna flex that, come out of the mold. You see, that's gonna give you just like a little tiny pine cones. And you can, of course, do this one is done bigger. So those are really fun for smaller projects, okay? And again, including craft as well. So that is how we make the pine cones. So I'm going to let these now dry. All right, so pine cones are now gonna dry and I'm next gonna show you how we finish these both off. So when using pine cones, we not only use spruce or fir, which obviously can be made in my new winter foliage mold, but also we use pine needles um, because pine trees are also very popular for, especially in certain areas of the world um, as a Christmas tree. So these are pine needles and the pine needles are um, made with floral tape. All right, so this will be the same for sugar as for craft. Um, and uh, then I'll explain the difference about the uh, sugar in technique. Now, all we do when we make the pine needles, and again, the directions for this are I'm gonna show you, but they're in book number obviously four. So we're gonna use some half width floral tape. So we're taking half width floral tape. This is light green floral tape. And I'm just gonna stretch it. All right, so just gonna stretch it sort of as you go. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna twist it. So I'm just gonna use my thumb and finger. And you see how I'm just twisting between my thumb and first finger and I'm stretching it as I go. And you can just sit like and watch TV, for example, and you could make lots of this. Now you're gonna need quite a few meters or yards of this for a project because you obviously, as you will see, but you just keep going until you get to the end, but just stretch your tape. And then just as I said, just gonna twist it to make this like a string of floral tape. Now I use this for stamens, for magnolias, for all different wood lilies, all different types of things. A lot of times in white, but it's a very useful technique to use for flower centers. Um, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the, we're gonna go around the end of the flexi scraper. So once you've got some of that twisted, we're gonna go around the end of the flexi scraper. So when you do this, you're gonna use, um, so the, this is the end of the flexi scraper, we're gonna go eight to 12 times around this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could do, say for example, some eight, some nine, some 10. 11 or 12, all right? So I'm gonna do this one 10, okay? Because what that means, you're gonna have different fullness of your little branches like that, okay? And this will actually yield you two. So then you're gonna take this off of the flexi scraper. You see, and you're gonna have that where the fold is. So now what we're gonna do is gonna take a 26 gauge wire, gonna thread through there with the 26 gauge wire, and then we're going to then twist this And then we're gonna twist it like this. Okay. And then you're going to, you either cut it in half, all right? Or you can cut it, for example, like to one side. Like, so you could make, so this will be shorter, this will be slightly longer. You cut it right in the middle. Okay, so really wherever you want it to, to be like that, I'm just gonna cut it. And then we take some half width floral tape. So this is our half width brown. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna catch that bottom. So you're just gonna just sort of almost like roll it between your fingers and just gonna tape down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch down the wire here. Okay, and then once we've done that, then we're gonna open it up using your companion tool. So with your 
little companion tool. So what I do there is I'm just gonna separate it because it's gonna be floral tape is a little sticky. Now when I um, move on in the second part of this video to show you the larch, I'm gonna also show you this technique on the larch, but because larch is a smaller cone and also a smaller little leaf, we're actually gonna be using quarter width floral tape. So you will see this technique again at the end of this first video. But you're just gonna open these up, all right, like so. You see that's gonna give you your pine needles. And then we can, um, when we do the repeat, this time going on the long side of the scraper 12 to 20 times. So then you can make larger versions of this. All right, so you see these will be like your smaller ones. And then you can make larger, larger ones. And there, what we're gonna do is you're gonna use the long part of your scraper. Now your scraper is very useful, your flexi scraper, because you can also use this, it's really good for when you put in sugar paste or rolled fondant onto a cake. You can use this to polish it when you're doing ganache in on cakes. Again, it's very, very useful for stenciling, all different types of things, so when you stencil on cookies. Now here, we're gonna use exactly the same technique, all right, but we're using the length of the flexi scraper instead of the width and you're going to go around 12 to 20 times around there. So again when you take this off, you're just going to go through here and again with both of these you have the option of just cutting it straight down the middle or making one of the pieces just slightly longer than the other. But this is a super super quick way um, for um, using with the pine cones. And I said this works really really well on a sort of a rustic wedding cake um, do this in all different ways. So it's going to gain, it's going to take that. So again, you can just cut it down the middle or you can cut it to, you know, sort of one side a little bit shorter, the other side a little bit longer. And again, we're just going to take some brown floral tape here with my brown floral tape, just going to twist that around, just going to take down about an inch, about two and a half centimeters, 25 millimeters. If your fingers get a little sticky, use a little bit of cornstarch, corn flour on them. All right, and then again, just gonna open this up. But in my book one, there is a cake in the beginning of book one, which is a rustic wedding cake, where there's a video of doing that cake. And uh, I actually use this technique on the, on the uh, here. Now, if you do have a needle that comes untwisted, generally because what's happening is just your floral tape has come untwisted, you're just gonna just twist, retwist it with your fingers, okay? because sometimes if you don't do that tight, tight enough, the floral tape will come unraveled. And alternatively, if that happens, you can also just cut it out, okay? Because it's not, as I said, that's gonna give you your, your needles, all right? Now, next we would then um, put some sugar onto those. So for um, sugar ones, we're gonna be using some confectioner's glaze or piping gel. So you again could take your piping gel, squeeze that onto a container, uh, onto a little um, piece of paper, like wax paper, parchment paper, brush it on the tips. Or alternatively, you can also use confectioner's glaze, which is a food grade shellac, like a food grade. And then when we do this on uh, sugar, um, on craft, what I do there is I would just use nail polish. So I would use clear nail polish. And then you can buy this type of product for craft application. It's actually like crushed plastic. But the other thing you can also use, Katie Sell, Sell, Sue Sell, this product called Flower Soft, which is called Polar White. And it's like almost like a fake snow. And this is wonderful for, um, for dips. So if you take this product and then you put a little bit of um, said nail polish on there and dip it into the Flower Soft, what that's going to do is going to give you the effect of like snow on the little branches, all right? So that's a really, really nice idea to use for the, for a Z for craft application. But, um, so then we're gonna take the confectioner's glaze. I'm just gonna show you one of these. And I'm gonna finish those up. So just gonna put just a little bit of glaze just onto the tips of the here. But also because, you know, this is floral tape and wire, even if you didn't have, uh, but I said, if you don't have the confectioner's glaze, piping gel works there as well. You see, then you're gonna just put this onto the tips if you want to, and of course that's gonna give you that sort of wintry look. So when you're going and you see how you're gonna get those sort of sparkly, like almost icicles on the end of your um, pieces. And of course you can totally leave the pine uh, natural as well. So you can just leave the pine natural without the sugar on if you wanted to go for say more, like I say, a summer groom's cake where you wanna do it just more of a, an unwinter themed with just that rustic element, just leave them as they are. 
So now I've finished uh, putting the sugar on all of my pine needles. These just need to dry for a few minutes before we color them. Uh, but this is actually using the flower soft. So you see how it gives you more of a snowy effect on there. So that's just done with obviously the flower soft. So I use some clear nail polish or the glaze and then a little in the flower soft because that won't dissolve, especially if you're using it in a moist area like a bathroom or on a front door wreath. Um, now, as far as sugar, um, this is actually sanding sugar. All right, so there's many, many companies that sell this, but also you can just use regular table sugar, like granulated sugar. And then if you want slightly larger particles, you can use like sugar sprinkles. So these have just got like slightly bigger particles. So there's many options there you can use for the sugar. So we're just going to let those dry. And then when I come back, I'm going to show you the coloring on the pine cones, on the spruce and the pine needles. And then we're going to move on to the assembly. So on the pine needles, we're going to take a little bit of a chocolate brown dust. So of course, for craft, you could use this as well as, of course, and then seal it with unscented hairspray. But also, of course, you could use uh, craft powders also. So we're going to put a little bit of chocolate brown just right at the bottom where the brown floral tape meets the green. We're just going to put a little bit of brown around the bottom there. Okay, and generally we do all these things before assembly. So that will be your pine needles. Now on your, um, on your spruce, all right, we're going to use brown. So we're going to put a little bit of brown at the bottom of all of them. Okay, and then just a little bit of brown just at the tip because you have that little sort of ones like a little top piece so just a little touch of brown just right on the tip of the spruce there like so and you would do that like so for example on this one here which i'm going to leave just the natural color i've got the brown here and the brown there um, this one i've just shown you i'm going to put a little bit of a darker green so this is like a sort of a forest green with like a sort of more of a bluey green color and i'm just going to brush this so just going to brush from the tips coming down and what that's going to do is just going to enhance the, to give you almost like a two-tone effect, all right? So, so that's sort of an option depending on how you're going to use it or what colors you want to, to uh, use. So that one we're going to have the, that's going to have the darker green on top of it. And then on the, just like the blue spruce, we're going to put the brown on here as well. So a little bit of brown just around the bottom here. A little bit of brown just on the very tip. All right, that one I'm going to paint. All right, so that's going to be, and then the other thing I'm going to dust in your instructions for the, obviously in the book for the, when you do the pine cones, there's generally three techniques I use. One of them is to use a contrast dust. So I'm actually using here a gray. So this is a gray color where I've actually just made it a little lighter using a little bit of corn flour or corn starch. And so on the small cones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again, just going to brush so this gray is a good color on top of brown. It just gives you a slight contrast, but you just brush gently from the top down and it's gonna just sort of pick out the detail from there. All right, now, all of those things that have been, um, have been uh, obviously dusted, we're going to steam them, okay? So it's gonna steam them. And what the steam will do is going to set the powder. For air drying clay, you just would spray over them with unscented hairspray. So this is just like an unscented hairspray. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand, but just sort of spray this over the top of the, the air drying clay pine cones, over the spruce if you've got dust on it, and then also the bottom of the needles. Because what that does, the unscented hairspray is going to set the, set the dust in powder, because steaming doesn't benefit the air drying clay in any way. Now also, if you don't know much about air drying clay, check out my Katie Sue video on uh, fundamentals of air drying clay and also the one on using the measuring mold to color the air drying clay because in the video I talk a lot about using that in different ways. Now when we do the um, we do the sugar one we you can just gently just steam the, the bottom here so just a little bit just on the bottom remember because we got sugar on the top there we don't want to get the sugar in the steam and then here we will then just gonna just gently steam and that just sort of sets the powder the one that we've got the green powder on, we're just gonna just steam that. And then also this one here, just gonna steam around that a little bit. So basically and when we use uh, powder, we're normally gonna steam it. And then with the pine cone, again, I'm just gonna just gently put the steam. So the steam is going to, as I said, or the case of the air drying clay, the hairspray will set that uh, powder, okay? So we'll stop it coming off. Now, so that's one option on the pine cone is to use powder. Now, the second option 
is to use powder with vodka. So this is a white powder, uh, dusting powder, which is titanium dioxide. And this, you know, you can buy just titanium dioxide. So there's many different companies that have this. It's just a white powder. It's used in toothpaste and different other food additives. So you can use like white dusting powder or basically a white um, powder. So you're just gonna put a little bit of that onto a dish. And then for uh, sugar ones, what we're gonna do is gonna use a little bit of vodka. So you want this almost like a little bit on the dry side. It doesn't want to be too wet, okay? Now this is going to give you that sort of shabby chic look. So a lot of times when you, um, in sort of uh, decorating, sometimes interior design, you'll take a pine cone, you whitewash it. So this is going to give you that sort of shabby chic sort of whitewashed effect. So what you do is you can just sort of brush over. So you see how I'm just brushing over the pine cone, coming down like this. So just to the bottom there, and you're gonna get that sort of whitewashed effect over your pine cone. So this is really nice for a sort of a rustic, and remember the antlers I showed you had, the, uh, had this technique on them with the pine needles. Now in the craft application, that means you could use a acrylic paint. So you could just take a white acrylic paint and with acrylic paint, just brush over the top of those. And then also for uh, sugar, this is very much like an edible version of acrylic paint. You can also use, uh, for example, here, this is a white gel. So that is another alternative. So in your directions in book four, talks about that as an alternative. So you can also take the white gel. But as I said, this could be white acrylic. And then you can use that to, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint that over the blue spruce. So I'm gonna use my white gel here and I'm just gonna just gently go over the blue spruce here to give it that sort of snowy look on the branches. So it's really just showing you some different techniques you can use for both sugar and for craft application. So you just see, I'm just gonna bring, bring it, gives it that sort of snowy look, which is nice for a sort of, you know, for a rustic look when you're doing that sort of cabin look, that sort of uh, outdoorsy uh, woodland look, you know, it's a really nice way to do it. Um, and then also, so that, that is, it could be acrylic paint. And then you can also use like a pearlized food paint. So this is, again, many companies have this type of paint. This is like a pearlescent food paint. So you can just take a little bit of that. And then alternatively, again, for craft, you just use, a, um, this is a, a white pearl paint, like acrylic paint, all right? So remember, you know, because craft application allows us to use not only sugar craft things, but also, of course, craft things as well. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just paint here, and this is gonna give you more of a pearlized effect, so a little bit more frosty. So again, very similar to the whitewash effect, but as I said, this is done with a pearl, a pearl uh, food paint, or as I said, a pearl um, acrylic paint for craft, okay? And that gives you some ideas of uh, color combinations onto there. And uh, so we have our um, color now, and we painted our pine cones. So when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we put those together in natural branches. So now we're gonna move on to assembly. So we're gonna use a 20 gauge wire. You can use a half length wire, or this is approximately two thirds of the length. So depending on how you're gonna use it uh, when it's completed, and also how big a uh, piece of spruce you're gonna make. Now I'm gonna start off with the, uh, this is, a, as I said, the, the small spruce, and then this is the one I cut down to make it a little bit smaller. So. When you do this, you can start off with a long piece or you can start off with shorter pieces, all right? I'm going to actually start off, so you've got different options here. So I'm gonna actually start off with my long piece. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take that, that long piece, all right? I'm gonna put it again on the 20 gauge wire up against the bottom. And I'm gonna take my, here, my brown floral tape. It's gonna go around a couple of times. So that will just come up to me and you're just gonna come down just a little ways. Also have a look and see which side looks sort of like best because you might have a side that looks better front ways there. And then we're going to take then, so I'm going to take a pair of pliers. I'm going to just sort of bend the spruce here out at the, slightly to the right. Going to come around here a couple of times. Then I'm going to have another piece coming out to the left, so I'm gonna actually use a shorter one here. Now when you do the shorter one, I showed you the first part of this, obviously the first half. So when you do the second half, all you need to do is still fill the mold up in the same way, but just obviously trim off, um, you know, just you don't have to texture all the way down to the bottom and you just push the dry part on the top and that will give you the, um, the shorter piece of spruce. 
you can also just attach it and then cut off the excess as we did before. So we're just gonna go round. All right, so then the spruce needle want to come up a little bit like that. And then you can take your cones. Now, when you put the cones in, you can, if you wish to, you can um, take the, the cones and then you can thicken just the base of it just a little bit, especially on the larger size ones, all right? So here we've got the, we're gonna use, I'm gonna use the ones that have got the pearl paint onto them. So I'm just gonna literally just thicken that just a little bit. So it just gives it that more natural look at the base. It's like if you watch things like my blossoms mold, um, my blossoms, cherry blossoms, this is a little bit like how we almost bring a, build a branch of the cherry blossoms. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is gonna take my pine cone, I'm just gonna just take that, gonna attach that into position. So we'll have a pine cone, it's gonna sit here. It's just when you look at the side of it and it's not it being a little bit thicker, it's gonna look better. It's gonna take down just a little ways. And also as you, as you, when you do this, you can also come up and down a few times like a wood with cherry blossoms. So it makes it a little bit more natural. And you can either do this when you finished or as you go, you can texture also with your, like your wire cutters. So what this will do, this will actually give it that almost like bark effect um, on the spruce. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my other two pieces and put these both in at the same time. So configuration really is totally up to you, sort of how you want to configure your pieces. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of different variations on this. And then we're just gonna go around a couple of times here. You can just open this up, you get a little bit of height here, and then you can put another uh, couple of cones here. So again, you're just gonna take your Pine cones here. So I'm just gonna put that in a slightly different angle. One here and one here. But especially when you um, elevate the pine cones slightly, what it means is that when you're looking at the stems of them, they look just a little bit more natural. Just gonna just go round. So here you see how we've got the pine cones here. So I'm gonna have that one a little bit lifted up slightly like that. You might lose a couple of little snips, but it's just really those little tiny snips we made at the base. All right, and then you're just gonna come down. And of course, this is gonna make quite a thick stem, so it looks like the natural pine branch or a spruce branch or um, fir branch. But if you're um, wanting to make it a little bit thinner, you don't want it so bulky, um, what you can actually do is when you get to, as you start putting these in, you can trim out some of your, like, your little smaller wires that come from the side here. But anyway, so you're gonna just kind of come down with your floral tape, and then we can go up. So, you know, if you were just having this, say, laying on a cake, or if this was done in air drying clay, and you wanted to put this onto, say, like a rustic frame, or you wanted to use it on in an arrangement or something like that, of course, then you can just cut this off to whatever length you want this to be. All right, so you're just gonna cut that off just carefully. Okay, and then you can take your, then we can use your wire cutters here or some like kitchen type of shear scissors and you can actually then texture this like the, the wood. And of course, you could also do the end of this like I do on my um, blossoms mold when I did the cherry blossoms. When you're making a natural branch, you can cut this off at an angle and then you can put like a little tiny piece of cream colored paste on there and dust or paint around it so it looks like the actual cut branch. Now, once we get to this point, all right, we would put a little bit of brown. So you just take a little bit of brown dust. All right, so we're just gonna put a little bit of brown dust. And I'm just gonna put some of that onto the, just onto the uh, here, just where we have the floral tape. And again, this is going to now just be steamed. All right, that's just gonna give you that nice natural look. So you'd steam this, and then again, for air drying clay, we would just spray this again with our hairspray, our unscented hairspray. But uh, you're just going to just uh, steam this, and then once we steam it, the brown powder is gonna just sort of like set the brown powder there onto the branch, okay? And um, so that's, that's sort of how we would, um, just gonna set, just waiting for this to boil. And then we're just gonna just steam this now. There we go. So it's gonna just gently steam this, because steaming doesn't do anything to air drying clay because the air drying clay is porous. 
so the uh, steam doesn't benefit, so you just would spray that with unscented hairspray. All right, so that's our sort of first option. So here I've actually got the um, pearlized effect on here and then like the whitewash um, with the uh, white paint or, or acrylic paint on the branches. But of course you could do both of them the same. Now this one here is just a slight variation in that I've done this one um, with the just a sort of almost like a sort of a juniper green color, pale juniper green color. And here you can see I've put a small one at the end and I've got a sort of a regular size one, a large one, a regular size one, a large one. So you see you can do any sort of configuration based on sort of how you're going to use, use the pieces. And then again, we're just gonna take the little, so it just also shows you the sort of the difference in the pine cone sizes as well. So again, you're just gonna, and of course, if you're not gonna see, like if you were putting this into say a, uh, an arrangement on a cake where this is gonna go behind a poinsettia, then you don't have to worry about doing anything to this. You can just tape down to the end of this. And then once you tape down, you can leave this wire longer as desired. And then again, you can just cut this off, all right? So you really only need, really need to do the sort of the natural, natural uh, texture on here, uh, the, uh, obviously if you're gonna see it, but sometimes you might, you might, for example, have this come in from behind a poinsettia. So there you just can texture that part. And again, you can just put the brown, just a little bit of brown onto here. And then I'll steam those in a minute. And then again, you just would steam that. Okay, so that gives us a sort of second, second option there. And then third option would be just using just the um, spruce. All right, so here again, I've got a long one. And then I have a, a short one, a short one, and then a, not the short one. These are all just the same, the size that would come out of the mold. So of course you could also just use this without any uh, cones in it. Of course, what also would look really nice with, um, you could make like a Christmas ornament, like for example, personalize that, like on a card, if you imagine like on a card, that could be like on a card and then you could have like an ornament with say personalized to the person's name or something. But obviously you can also use your cones. And then the little tiny, um, when I show you the, the large cones, all right, these will be the next thing. These are the large cones, but you could also integrate these. These look beautiful in amongst the spruce as well. So I'm gonna show you how we make the large cones in the next part of this and the large needles. But uh, there's two sizes of large cones. So you could do little smaller cones because you know it's different varieties of spruce and pine and, and uh, conifers and things have different size berries on them. So that's just using the, just that just as the normal one. And again, you could just texture this. And then again, you could put a little bit of brown onto there if you wanted to. And then just steam that, or again, spray that with hairspray if it was, uh, as I said, with uh, air drying clay. And then the, here, I'm just gonna show you the, so this is again, just a 20 gauge wire. So we're gonna use the, just gonna show you the pine needles. And in some of my different projects and my different videos, you know, I've shown the pine used in different ways. But uh, when you use the pine, what we generally do is just gonna put the pine on the end of the wire like this. Okay, and then I'm just gonna just tape down. So I'm just gonna go down about five centimeters and then down. So you're gonna go down, up and down. And see that gives you your branch. And then you can add your, another set of pine needles. So here I'm putting in a small one. So down, up, down. This is gonna be similar to the large because the large has smaller groupings, but I said they're gonna be done in, I'm gonna show you two ways of doing the large. And then we're gonna put in a medium size one. There we go, medium here. Let's see, it's gonna sit in here like this, so this will make your pine needles. Remember, these can be done with or without the snow on them. So again, you know, if you were doing this for say a groom's cake, which in the United States, you know, we do a lot of groom's cakes and they're becoming much more popular globally as well. But if this was, for example, in the middle of summertime, you know, you probably would just use the pine cones and the pine. And of course you can put in the pine cone here. We can come down, we can come up. We can come down and then we're gonna put in some more sp spruce here. So I'm gonna put some, sorry, the pine at the side here. So this gives you your pine needles. Put 
This just gives you lots of ideas for not only for Christmas time, but also for other times of year as well. You know, as I said, for groom's cake and rustic cakes and things, you can use these. And then I'm going to take my two pine cones here. And these two pine cones are going to sit at the top here. Of course, the other slight advantage with the air drying clay, the air drying clay is a lot lighter. So of course the sugar pine cones are a little bit heavier. And that's why I've got this on a fairly strong wire. We have this on the on the 20 gauge wire. Just going to bring these together. Again, just go up and down. But just just using three pine cones on here. Of course, you could just get away with just using one one on there. And like on the on the frame on the uh, here on the, see here, what it is there is I just used a cluster of three large size, or two large size and one medium size cone. And then I just used long, all long um, needles. And I just did them as like a cluster. You see then that just is wired through the middle and you can watch the video on that. Put the ribbon on, just wire it through the middle of the Flower Pro hoop and you get very, very professional results uh, very, very easily. But that would look beautiful on top of a wedding cake topper or using for other other occasions. And then we're just going to take your, now your other pine needles here. You see, I'm just going to just take these other pine needles. I'm just going to use those on the pine branch. Of course, you can, can add more of those as well. Again, you just will come down and then again, this would be textured. And then depending on how you're going to use it, but of course, if you wanted this on a long wreath, you could actually start off with a full length wire here as well. But here you see how you have your, your um, as I said, your pine. So here you can see we've got your pine. Let me move this out of the way. You have your pine and then you have your spruce. So we've got our spruce without the cones. We have spruce with the small cones. And we have the spruce, the blue spruce here with your large uh, medium cones. All right, so this just gives you some ideas of how you can use the uh, spruce and combine it with your Flower Pro uh, Nicholas Lodge cones as well. And then also making the pine needles out of the uh, floral tape. And then of course, I've explained a bit about the craft application as well. So next coming up, we're going to show you how I'm going to show you how to use another part of the mold. We're going to be making the large cones and also the large needles, which is made from the winter foliage mold. So now we're going to move on to the larch. Now larch is a uh, said a member of the conifer family. So very much like the spruce, but it has these little groupings, sometimes like little clusters like this of uh, needles, so shorter needles and smaller cones. So we're going to be using uh, two parts of the mold. And I'm going to show you two different ways of making the large needles. The first one with paste, second one with floral tape, like I showed you the pine needles. Um, so we're going to use this part of the mold here. So this has got three cavities. Now in um, video number uh, three, where I'm going to show you how to use this for the um, for the juniper leaves. All right, so this is also used for juniper, but this could be used for rosemary, for lavender, many, many different types of little skinny leaves. All right, but we're only going to use the small and medium size of these. So we will take the first of all wires. Now in your directions in book four, um, I'm basing it on that I've made uh, here the components for my needles here. I'm going to actually use 48 needles for a branch. And so um, this is really not time consuming. It sounds a lot, but as I said, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to take eight wires. So these are 30 gauge green wires. All right, and I use green wires here. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you use, but here I'm using green wires. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut these green, these wires in half. And then each half I will cut into three. So this will actually yield 48 uh, wires. All right, so just going to just make your, and then you're going to do the same on the other side here. And when we do the, in video three, when I show how to make the juniper leaves, I will be using the same the same technique as this. All right, so it's going to have your little wires ready to go. Now we're going to use, I'm just going to use a, a sort of a basic green, like a foliage green colored paste for this. 
All right, and because we're going to be dusting a little bit of color onto this, so this is just a slightly sort of yellowy green, but pretty much as I said, you can do this in, if you look again, look on the internet, there's lots of different color variations here. A little tip here is also if you keep those wires on a magnet, that just sort of keeps them in place. So when I teach my classes, usually I would always put magnets out for the students, and it sort of is just a great way to keep your wires, they don't fly all over the table. All right, now what we're going to do here is for the needles, we're going to take a number five ball of paste. All right, so we're going to use a regular number five ball of paste. And so that's going to be one third below, two thirds above. All right, so you're just going to, it's a tiny bit more. So just a number five size, regular size. So remember about one third below the hole, two thirds above the top of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to condition this paste because these type pieces are very tiny. All right, so rather than, for example, doing these um, individually like we normally would condition, we're going to do this all at the same time. So we're going to condition that with a little bit of vegetable fat uh, shortening on here. And of course, with your air drying clay, you just would uh, usually just mold it. But again, air drying clay, you can um, add a little bit of fat to it as well. And if you find it needs a little bit of elasticity. I'm going to roll this into a sausage. Now, this is very similar to the technique I've used on some of my other videos, like in fact, on my wedding foliage video, uh, when I did the um, English boxwood, I used this technique. I'm going to use a little small palette knife, mini palette knife, and I'm going to roll this into a sausage. Now, it doesn't matter what length the sausage is, as long as it's fairly regular and then you're going to cut the this into quarters and in each quarter you will cut into three so what this is going to do this is going to yield 12 little tiny balls of paste all right so you're going to get the little balls of paste out here also don't worry they vary slightly but just obviously you usually cut them in quarters and then you cut that into and because these will dry out quite quickly i would just suggest do 12 of these at a time okay I'm going to take these, just going to put these onto my little flexi scraper, going to put them underneath a little container. So we have those ready to go. Okay. Now all we're going to do is going to take your glue. All right. So you're going to take your glue. Um, for air drying clay, you're just going to use obviously your PVA glue. So you can just dip that into a pot. Here for sugar, you would just dip this into your glue, into your egg whites. You're going to just put a little bit of glue just onto the tip here. You're going to take a ball of paste, all right, and then because this is already conditioned, you're just going to insert the wire into this. So the wire wants to come past the end of it. So you can see the wire is past the end. Use a little bit of corn flour, corn starch on your fingers, and then you're just going to just roll that so your paste comes just past the end of the tip. Now this wants to be made to about the length of the cavity in the mold, all right. So you're going to take this, I'm going to show you this a couple of times, if you place this in, now I want to put a little bit of um, fat into there as well. So just a little bit of fat into those two small ones. Just forgot that. This is not so important, but as I said, usually it was going to make it easier. And you can just press this in with your finger. You can use a cosmetic sponge, but usually I find this one, you can just press in with your finger. Now if your fingers stick in a little bit, just use a little bit of cornstarch or put again, just a little tiny bit of fat on your finger that will stop it sticking. Okay. And then what we do is see so when we take this out, you're going to get this little vein on there. And the, these are actually the leaves. This is the two sizes of leaves we're making. But you see how they have this really nice detailed, uh, you've got this little vein, this little lateral vein running down the middle of them. Okay, so then, so what you do is you press it one side, then you just turn it over and you press it on the other side. So this is gonna, of course, you're gonna lose the vein in slightly on this back one, but this, then you take it out and then the side that you have, um, you're just gonna pinch the bottom of it. So you just pinch it at the base there like so just on the side that you take out second, which is the side with a more uh, prominent vein on it. And then here, you just lay those onto a piece of sponge, okay? So these ones have already been made, so you just lay these onto a piece of sponge, and you will continue. So I'm gonna show you one more of these ones, and then I'll show you the, the uh, larger ones. So as I said, it's, uh, but if you condition your paste before you start work, it makes it a lot easier. So as I said, we're just gonna put just a little bit of glue, you can brush that on, or just uh, dip that in. So remember your wire comes just past the end of the um, little ball of paste with a little corn flour cornstarch. You're just gonna stretch that. So it wants to be about the length of the, the mold. Now press this in. 
I said for air drying clay, if your fingers are sticking or your tools are sticking, just use a little bit of cold cream, like Nivea cream, Pond's cold cream, onto there. And basically any moisturizer cream. You take this out, you turn it over. This is gonna just help to give you the nice shape. You repress it in the other side. And then the side, when you take it out, it's got the vein on, you're just gonna just pinch the, the bottom of the leaf like that. So you just will continue making 12 of those, all right? So, so I've got 12 of those, and then I've actually got 36 of the medium size ones. Now, when we do the medium size one, so in your directions there, um, we're going to continue with the number six small. So here we're gonna use a number six small size ball of paste. And of course, if you're gonna do what I've suggested, 48 needles, you would do this three times, all right? So, but it's best not to cut these um, up into little tiny balls because they will dry quickly, all right? With air drying clay or with sugar. Um, as I said, so number six small, so that wants to just, just go through the hole. It's a little bit small, too small. It wants to just, just go through, all right, like that. Now again, remember you're going to condition this paste, all right? So you want to condition it with a little bit of your fat, your... And with air drying clay as well, if your air drying clay feels a bit dry, you can also just dip that in some water, okay? So just use your air drying clay with some water in here. And then you're going to just roll this into a sausage. Now another way, um, if your sausage challenged, another way you can do that is you can use your flexi scraper. And with your flexi scraper, you see what that does, it's gonna help to make sure your sausage is gonna be even all the way along. And you can just even up the ends of that. But this is good also to make sausages like this, okay? And again, we're gonna cut this into quarters. So gonna cut this into, but in video three, when I do the juniper, I'm gonna do the same technique, but with just a juniper green colored paste. And then of course also I'll be showing you in video three how to make the larger leaves as well. But for the, for the um, large, we only need the small and the medium. So generally I found like a little knife like this. You can also use the scraper as well. You can use your flexi scraper. But the only thing is, is that the knife is a little bit easier to see where your edge is, all right? So generally a small knife. And usually when I'm working on a plastic surface like this, I'm not going to use anything sharp, but again, for craft, if you use the self-healing mat, you could take like a little um, scalpel, exacto knife, and you could cut that up easily. Again, I'm just gonna pop those underneath my little pot here, because this is a really super quick way of measuring out your pace. Because as you can see, this is the large size one. So that is um, gonna be like a number two small size, all right? So basically the small size one would be about number one size, but you can imagine measuring off 36 number two smalls. This is a much quicker way to do that. And as I said, I use that technique for quite a few different things. So on the larger one, I'm just gonna show you one of those. So again, just gonna put a little bit of glue, but you can also use your um, paintbrush. So you can also just put your paintbrush in some glue and just put a little bit of glue and usually with like PVA glue. And then also when you're using the PVA glue, you're gonna use, you can use the needle tip applicator. So I use these with glue in it. And then what you'd actually do is you can pu push the glue so the glue comes out and then you put that in the top and just pull it out and it will coat the wire with glue. When I teach a lot of my classes with uh, air drying clay, like my baby's breath, my gypsophilia and stuff, that's the technique I use and for leaves as well. So you're gonna put the wire through the paste here like this. And then we're going to then just gonna roll this. So you see how I'm just stretching this so that the wire just disappears in the, um, at the end. And then you're just going to take that again, I've already got, so see how you're just going to press this in here like so. And then you're going to turn this over. You're going to press this in the other side as well. All right. That's going to give you the exact size you need. Then when you take it out, the side that you pressed in second, you're just going to just pinch the bottom of the that, so it's just a little tiny bit tapered at the base. Now also this technique could be used for an alternative to make uh, spruce or uh, fir. So if you think of a Christmas tree branch, so literally if you made like probably two or 300 of these, you could actually use those taped onto a wire, um, just a little bit like how you would do rosemary. So you just would, and um, that would create, but of course this would be quite time consuming, but also very realistic as well. But there's also lots of other fun things that you can use these for for like doll's house miniatures, for little tiny like tulip leaves and things like that. There's lots of different flowers that have little tiny um, 
petals like this that you could use for the petals, the inside petals of flowers. So really a very versatile mold, you know, like all of my Flower Pro molds is very well thought out in other things you can make with this. But as I explained, this is also what I use for um, when we do the juniper, which I'll be showing you in video three, but also for example, for rosemary leaves and then also for lavender as well, we use this same mold. So that's um, how we make the leaves, all right? So I've got those, they're ready drying, okay? So we've got the, um, the small leaves, I've got tw 12 of those, and then I have 36 of the medium-sized leaves. They don't take many minutes to dry, and again, you can use your food dehydrator. Um, so when I come back, I'm gonna show you how to do an alternative method for making the leaves, and then moving on to the large cones. This is an alternative uh, to make large needles with floral tape. So a little bit like I showed you the pine needles, but this is almost would be a sort of obviously a little quicker if you needed a quicker alternative uh, to making the individual leaves. So we're gonna use similar technique, but use quarter width floral tape and stretch it. Again, I'm using the lighter green here Then just roll that between your fingers and just going to just stretch that. Again, you remember you need to make several meters yards of that, okay? And then just like we did on the pine needles, we're now gonna take our, uh, so you're going to then take in flexi scraper, wrap six to 12 times around the end of the flexi scraper. So it's gonna go around, so two, three, four, five, six. All right, so you go six to 12 times. Now also, if you don't have enough, like from what you've twisted, you can just go around like this. You could cut this off, and then you could then just take another piece and then literally you can just, with another piece, you can just start and then go around however many times you need, all right? Um, now here we're gonna do this a little bit differently because here we want more of a full, see it's got more needles than the pine needles and you could even do pine needles in this way as well because what's really cute, if you use this small larch mold and then you make this size uh, pine needles, you could turn this into a pine branch, okay? But here you're gonna take this off. So here's a little bit different in that we're gonna put just a single 26 gauge wire over the middle of this, all right? And then you see, so it's gonna give you double the amount. And then you're gonna take this, you're gonna twist it. All right, and then you're going to cut this. So it's gonna then, once you twist this, I'm gonna go around with brown floral tape. So I'm gonna use quarter width brown floral tape, which we're gonna be using for the large cones in a moment. So we're just gonna use like we did on the pine, but because this is a smaller scale. And then you're gonna cut these to 20 millimeters in length. All right, so they wanna be cut. So pretty much almost like right at the end there. Because if you're all using a flexi scraper, it's gonna give you this size. And then it's gonna just open this up. So again, it's gonna use your, you can use this almost a little bit like a sort of a brush or a comb, just go through your needles to separate them because the floral tape is a little sticky, all right? But as I said, this will give you your um, large needles here, okay? And then once we've done the cones, I'll show you how to use these and also how to use the uh, groupings of um, the piece ones. So next we're gonna make the little large cones. So for the large cones, we're gonna take one third length, 26 gauge green or white wire, and then using quarter width brown tape, we're gonna stretch and you're gonna go around the end of the wire three times, hook. So this is just like a mini version of the pine cones. You're gonna go one, two, three. Because this is not such a strong wire, you can just use your fingers here. Unless you have long fingernails, just use your fingers. You're gonna go around three. And then we're gonna go three more times. One, two, three. And then just come down here, about halfway down, and you're gonna break off your tape, all right? So this is gonna make your little floral tape buds. Now, when we make the large cones, I'm gonna make these in a um, more of a sort of a chestnutty brown. So what it is, I used a light brown, but I put a little bit of yellow into it. So I made it, as I said, a lighter color. So you can see again, this is the little uh, mold. So there's the two sizes here, the larger and the small, but this is really beautiful to use on, uh, again, Christmas cards or on you know, cupcakes, petty fours, especially when you want a little tiny pine cone. You could just do some royal icing uh, branch or whatever you can use, obviously, um, painting as well. So just really, really good for cookie decorating and things like that. So when we think about 
something like my rustic um, rustic theme. So like on my using my small log slice. So this is my little uh, small log slice, which again, I have a video on using this and the medium and large. But again, if you're using, for example, like a little uh, pine cone and then some piped needles, or you could add also, of course, you could to some royal icing. You could just add some royal icing like a line of royal icing, brown royal icing, and then you can add the little needles and things here. But this is really, really cute for, as I said, greeting cards in clay, air drying clay, but also for uh, cookies, for cupcakes, petty fours, things like that. So it's a really, really nice size, okay? And, uh, but of course you usually, when you're putting this onto something you're gonna eat, you don't want to use anything that's non edible. So that's why you would only use spaghetti if you wanted to stand it up. So anyway, so we're going to take the, uh, the the light brown color. So I said like a, almost like a caramel color. And uh, so we're going to use a number six for the small large cone. And then we're going to use a number six large. Now in your, in the book, um, it has there one quarter below three quarters above. We don't very often use a large size, all right? Most of the time we use regular size, which will be one third below two thirds above. And sometimes we use small, all right? But there are times where, for example, in this situation, the number seven small, which would be the next size up, would be way, way too big because you see like that, that obviously is a six large, but you see it's way, way smaller than obviously the opening to the number seven. So when we measure the small ones, this is just gonna be a regular size like we've shown. So one third below two thirds above. And then when we do the large one, what it will do is it will go onto there, but you have about a quarter below and about three quarters above, okay? So that would be how you would measure that. And um, you can also, uh, these could be put onto spaghetti, all right? But what you would do there is rather than using regular spaghetti, this is angel hair pasta, okay? So angel hair pasta is a lot thinner. So when you're doing things on spaghetti, for example, for cupcakes and other applications, you can use spaghetti, regular spaghetti for normal uh, type of uh, size things. But on a smaller scale like this, I said we could take the angel hair pasta you see, and that would go in there beautifully, all right? So you could just do that in the same way I showed you on the pine because you can see the difference between spaghetti and angel hair spaghetti or pasta. It's quite a difference, all right? It's less than half the size. So anyway, so what we're going to do here, going to take your, um, again, going to brush this with a little bit of the, your fat here. But these could be made in all different colors, you know, so you can do these for, for craft again, you know, you could do them with gilding wax on them or other things as well. So your clay could be. So what you would do with the clay here, again, using your, you see like if you, if you go to a sort of a mid brown, all right, this would be using your measuring mold. So this would be done with your hardy clay. So to sort of to a mid number five, number six size brown added to a number one of white, that's gonna give you that sort of tone. And all you would do is add a little bit of yellow um, air drying clay, just add some yellow to that. And it's gonna give you this almost caramel color. All right, so it's gonna just mold that. It's got a little bit of green in here. Just make sure that you don't have any green in here. So very much like we did the other, um, just gonna press this in. So again, we're just gonna use your here, just gonna work this to the top. Just wanna just stay within the perimeter of the mold. And then you can just gonna use your little flexi scraper. Just take that little bit of excess off. Just gonna press this in. Just make sure that it goes into the detail on the mold. So you can just go into there Remember, if you come outside the perimeter of the mold, what I often do is just use my finger like this, and that will just, as I said, just almost push the paste back in, all right? And just again, you're just gonna just press this on the top. This just makes sure that you get all of the, the detail on there, but you just wanna always stay within the perimeter of your mold. You know, a lot of people, um, someone's sort of put too much paste in the mold, and this is where the size guide works wonderful for flower pro system. Um, because you really can't overfill your mold and using your little flexi scraper, you just trim off your excess. Because remember, some things I've shown you already are a little bit um, bigger than we need them. And because uh, we're working within the size guide. Okay. And again, you can use here um, either piping gel or you could use your glue as well. But it's going to put just a little bit of that onto the end of the wire. So it's going to go onto the, just a little bit of the glue onto there. There we go. So this is just piping gel here. And then just like we did before, just gonna just put this in. So this is a little bit more shallow, okay? So just gonna push your, just sort of push it in. 
So this one won't completely disappear under the rim, but of course there's a huge difference in the size as well. So as long as it's flat, you see how you're just gonna flatten that out like so. You're gonna flex your mold here. This will come out of the mold. So you see how it's gonna give you the pine of the little uh, large cone. All right, so you would then again, with air drying clay, you go straight ahead and you then would repeat the process and then you would then do the top, all right? Because these will obviously line up. Now in sugar, again, just like with the larger pine cone, you let this dry. These really don't take that long to dry. So of course, if you did the pine cone, the large cones first, and then you made your leaves, then you could just have these in your food dehydrator if you have one. Um, even having a fan on them will help them to dry more quickly as well. But as I said, and then you can then move straight on to the second part. But these, of course, are quite uh, small and they're not as uh, three-dimensional, so you know they don't take really that long to dry. And then all you then do is just going to repeat the process. So just going to repeat the process here. So, but you see your cosmetic sponge. Just going to just work your paste to the top, and then we can just use that to trim off your excess. Just stay within the perimeter of your mold. Again, I'm just gonna put some little dots of piping gel onto here, or you can have piping gel into a separate container. Let me just brush this over the top. But here you're just gonna use a PVA glue in the bottle or obviously from a little pot. Just not too much but just make sure you come right. And especially with the air drying clay, the important thing is here, if you don't get the glue right the way to the edge, what will happen is it shrinks. It's going to actually, the seam will separate. So you need to make sure that you get that done completed. So you see how this is just gonna just go over the top. You can press nice and firmly into there like so. It's gonna flex your mold and take it out. And that's gonna give you a little large cone here. All right, so this will give you a little large cone. So just bring those together like that. All right, and so that's how you'd make those. And again, just dry that with the dry side down um, and those will be ready to go. So next I'm gonna show you how we color and finish off the larch to finish off this first video. So for the assembly of the larch needles, so once they're dry, um, so you're just following the directions as a list production. So we're gonna start off with three small and three medium. Now you want the part that you hollowed in towards the center and you'll be able to just bend these with your fingers because the wire goes all the way up, all right? So you see how, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just take like three little tiny leaves. You're gonna use some quarter width floral tape. I'm just gonna go around a couple of times like that. And then I'm going to then take the, as I said, this is the side I pinched. It's gonna go onto the inside. Then we're gonna do three leaves, two, three. So these would just sort of sit in like a triangle, almost they're gonna go in between. But it doesn't matter if they're not exactly like that because obviously they don't have to be exactly symmetrical. All right, but you see how you're gonna have three and then three. This will be the same for rosemary, all right? And then you're just gonna tape down with your quarter width tape. All right, so it's gonna be three and three like that. And then we're gonna do three groups of three and five, okay? So we'll have three um, small and then in a triangle and then you have five around the outside and then we're going to use the medium ones because remember we made 36 medium ones so we've got seven medium ones and then we have 11 medium ones so you're just going to divide up what you have and so you're just going to start off with some smaller groupings and then we're going to go on to obviously some some bigger ones and you can even like on rosemary you can start off with just the medium sized ones like three of those and then go up now um once we've got that done, we're ready to move on to the coloring. So I'm just gonna bring in my paper here. And uh, so when we color, so we're going to use, first of all, some brown. So we're gonna take some brown uh, on here. So we're gonna take some brown. So we're gonna use a little bit of brown on the base, just like we did on the pine needle. So at the very bottom there, you're gonna put a little bit of brown, just right at the very base. I've already done the other ones there. Gonna be the larger group in here. This is a three and a five. Okay, and then we're also gonna put some brown onto the pine, the little uh, large cones, which are like the small version of a pine cone. So again, we're just gonna use some chocolate brown, just gonna brush over 
those. Now we're going to just assemble this and then steam the whole thing because it's easier sometimes when we do that, like when we do certain flowers, it's going to brush over the top of your little large cones. Okay, and then also on the bottom of the uh, floral tape buds, which I've already got this together, you would also put a little bit of the, you can do this with this one, you can actually even do this. It's easier, you can sometimes even do it once you've got it assembled, right? Which we're going to talk about in a second. So we've got that together. Um, then we're going to take some moss green. So with some moss green color here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to brush the inside only with moss green. So we're just going to just brush the inside because when you actually look at a pine needle, a real pine needle, or when you look at spruce and things, the actual needles are two-tone color. So, so it's going to be green on the front and then you see the back will be that sort of more that limey sort of green, a foliage green color. So you're just going to put a little bit of green. So you're just going to just rub your brush up on the inside of the, you can open these up a little bit. And that's just going to give you just a little bit of darker color. So when you actually look at it from the side, it's going to have that sort of two-tone, that two-tone effect. All right, so you get that nice natural look there, like so. So next we're going to move on to color to assemble, and then we're going to steam. So what I'm going to do here is I take a 20 gauge wire. This is about two-thirds length of the full length wire. All right, but again, you can make this as long as you want. So about five centimeters, about two inches from the end of the wire, I'm gonna take my floral tape. I'm gonna start, this is half width tape. So remember when you do the assembly of these, you need to use quarter width tape so you don't get too much bulk. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to the end and you're actually gonna come a little bit off the end of the wire. So you're just gonna tape past the end of the wire, then you're gonna come back down and then you're gonna come back up. Again, just come a little bit past the end of the wire. So what this means is you're just gonna have this on the end of the wire, you can just trim that a little bit with scissors, but you'll have this. So it's gonna give you like, almost like a sort of a fine, like little branch. It's just gonna be like twisted, twisted tape on the end there. So you can just give that a little bit of shape there like so. Okay, so that's gonna give you just like a little bit of an end to there. And then you're going to take the, with your pair of pliers. So though these are 30 gauge wires, but when you put six of them together or nine of them together, they become a little bit thicker. So you're going to then put in the smallest group, which is going to be the three and three. Now the difference with rosemary, when you do rosemary, you have that right at the top. You'll have like usually a little cluster of say three medium ones right at the top there. And then we're going to come down just a little way. It's going to go up. So we're going to do the three times. So we're going to make the sort of the branch a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to take my little large cones. And I'm just going to bend one to the right and one to the left just slightly. You can have these single or you can have them in groupings. So then we're going to put in the small little um, large cones. So they're going to just sit into there like so quite close. I'm going to come down just a little way up and down. And you can just give them a little bit of shape. So you see how I've almost like overlapped them a little bit. And then we're going to take in the next one. So this is going to be, so we have three groups like this, which are going to be the three um, small and five medium. So we're going to come just down, just a little way up and down. And you're going to put in the second one. So these are going to just sort of sit. So I'm going to go one on one side and one on the other side of this. So just gonna go up and down three times. So see, so I'll have this one and you can just sort of open these up a little bit like this. And then we'll have our third one there. So you have the little needles. It's gonna come down, up and down, just to give you that natural sort of branch effect. Okay, then I'm gonna put in I'm going to have then a single cone. So I'm going to put in a single large cone. I'm going to come down just a little ways. Then I'm going to put in, these are all medium sized leaves. So this is just going to come to the side. 
going to come down just a little ways. And then we're going to put in my last two cones here. Again, we're just going to put those cones in. So those will just sort of sit like, like this. Okay, and then just going to pop those, put those in. I'm going to come around. So they, those will just, just move them around so you get them into the right sort of shape here. And then we're going to put in our last little grouping of leaves here. All right, and that's sort of how you would do your large. And of course, if you're wanting to then extend this, you know, you could use a full length wire to start off with, but also what we can do at this point here, we can add another, uh, you can add some more wires. So you could, for example, take another, um, you know, like a 20 gauge wire and you could just sort of put in another, this is a 22 on the end here, but you can use a 20 gauge wire just to finish this off. So you can come down up and down. Again, you can just make this as long as you want it to be. And then once we get this completed, we will just go very similar to what we did before. We're going to then just take your, this will be like the end of the stem here. So again, I'm just gonna tape that. And of course you could then just this single 20 gauge wire, you could just extend that if you were gonna put that into an arrangement like if you're just say doing a Christmas arrangement on a little bit of height there, you can do. And then again, we're gonna just gonna texture. So just gonna texture with your little wire cutters or scissors. But you need like sort of, sort of fairly like kitchen shear type of scissors when you do this. And that's gonna give you the sort of the, the, like the bark effect. Okay, so it's gonna give you that sort of nice effect on the large. Now on the, um, here, I've done this exactly the same way on the 22 gauge wire. I've just added obviously the pine needles, a small cone, pine needles, a medium, uh, large cone. So obviously that just shows you two different ways of making the large. And once you get that completed, again, we would then, um, if this was air drying clay, we would just um, obviously take your unscented hairspray and then you just would spray that with your unscented hairspray all over. That's gonna set the powder. Obviously for a sugar one, we're going to then just take your, um, we're gonna just steam this. And when we are making the, the large, you can um, also, I'm gonna show you that as well. You can make the actual needles, once you've steamed it, we can glaze those. So that will be the final step. This one basically is finished. I've just got the brown on here and brown on the cone. But because this is quite simple to do, you can just do this once it's assembled, okay? But we're going to just gonna take your, here, and then just going to just uh, come over the surface of that, just gonna steam that lightly. You're gonna do the same on the cones here. All right, that will be steaming it. And then when I come back, I'm gonna show you how you can glaze these. Now, the, we wouldn't use a spray glaze here because obviously if you were doing that, you could do that and then assemble them, but we can just brush those over with a, um, with a glaze, or as I said, we can use a craft type of glaze. So with the um, leaf, with the sugar um, larch, we're going to take some, this is some leaf glaze, which is a diluted glaze, which you can buy like this already diluted, um, or you can use alcohol to dilute your glaze yourself. And uh, what we're gonna do then, you're just gonna just brush those onto the, all over the leaves, all right? Now, sometimes we use spray lacquer, and I'm just showing you different techniques. So, uh, but this is a leaf glaze, a brush on leaf glaze, because if we use the spray lacquer, once we've got it assembled, you make your cone shiny, which you don't want. You want that more matte finish. So that is uh, one alternative we can use for the sugar larch. Another option is, is that you can take a little bit of vegetable fat shorting on the back of your hand. You use, again, an old brush you keep specifically for that. You could brush this over the leaves and that will give them a little shine as well. So that's an alternative technique. Long term, it's not gonna stay as shiny as the glaze will, but this would be an alternative you could use for leaf glaze. And then when we do a craft one, so if this was air drying clay, um, I would use generally a brush on glaze. I found this is a little bit more user friendly than the spray glazes we use in craft. So this is a Sculpey product, which is available sort of pretty much everywhere. Um, it's a satin glaze and I use this for a lot of my projects I do personally. 
and with my groups and things with air drying clay. And when I teach air drying clay, this is the product I use. It goes on a little bit opaque, but as I said, it's user friendly, you can water, it's water soluble, so you wash your brushes up with water as soon as you finish with it. So it's a very, very convenient product, okay, uh, to use. And this gives you your um, larch. So obviously the larch is, um, and then we have the alternative method, which is just a smaller group in here. Um, so here you see the large cones with their, um, with their uh, twisted floral tape leaves, just like we did the pine cones. So the, with the, uh, the pine. So this gives you another two um, really nice winter foliages for your repertoire to use on their own or with other, as I said, seasonal um, embellishments and colors, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this first video on using my new Flower Pro by Katie Sue Designs winter foliage mold and we'll have lots of fun using this. So remember in this video we covered the making of the spruce and fir, how to make pine cones, how to make pine needles, assembly of those, and then moved on to the larch needles in two methods and also the larch cones. In the next video, in video part number two, I'm going to be showing you how to make the conifer and how to make the conifer berries. And then we're going to be moving on to the uh, bay leaves, which is like the bay laurel, um, and also how to make the berries of that. So I'll see you in the next video. Sweet dishes, see you soon, bye.